So the next thing that we are going to look at is the columns law. So the columns law is actually trying to look at the distance between two different charges and come up with the relationship of these two different charges in terms of their distance. So the law state that the force of attraction, the force of attraction is directly proportional. The force of attraction, which is F, the force of attraction, which is F, is directly proportional to is directly proportional to the product of their charges is directly proportional to product of their charges which is q1 q2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so of course this is a charge particle one and this is a charge particle two and this is their distance of separation so now the columns law is actually trying to look at what is the relationship between the product of this pass of these uh, charges and the distance that separate them with reference to their masses. So now the force of attraction is directly proportional to Q1, Q2 all over R square. And of course, remember, whenever we have proportionality, we introduce constant. Whenever we have proportionality, we have to introduce constant. So in this case, our constant is Q. So that is why we have, uh, we have F, we have F is equal to, so our constant here is K. So we have KQ1, Q2 all over R square. And of course, the Q itself has also, it is on, is a constant. And this constant is something like this. The constant is something like this. That's F, that Q is equal to 1 all over 4 phi permittivity of a free space. So this key is something as this. So that is why if you have K as this, then you can just replace this key and in the formula and substitute it with one all over four five permittivity. So that is why at the end we'll have something like this L is equal to uh, Q1, Q2 all over four five permittivity of every space then R square. And this key is, it has a value, it has, it is on standard value, which is 9.0 times the rest of R of 9. So 9.0 times 10, rest of R of 9 is the value of this key, which is something as 1 all over 4 5 formativity of every space. But the formativity itself, the formativity of every space, when you said free space, it means a space where there is no air. It's like an isolated medium. So it has a standard units. It has a standard units. So it has a standard value, which is 8.86 times the rest of R of minus 12 column square for Newton meter square. So that is the value for this. So ladies and gentlemen, your columns force can either be this, or this okay. so the columns will describe the interaction between bodies due to their charges so now we are now going to look at the gravitational and electric forces in the hydrogen bonded sorry in the hydrogen atom so first, in the hydrogen atom, we have uh, in the hydrogen we have one electron. Of course, let me just look at it like this. 
you know that if we have hydrogen hydrogen have one electron so the one mass number one atomic number so it means that electron is one and proton is also one and there is a mass so the mass this is the mass of electron me yeah this one is me that is the mass of electron and of course we have molar mass and then we have the distance of their separation so for the gravitational force we have formula of course remember the formula for gravitational force is uh, uh mass of object one and the mass of the second object and we have the distance of separation mass r square and then of course this is the formula for electrical force so the so if you now substitute these values if you substitute this value here if you substitute this value then you are going to get this and of course we are going to use the charge of electron which is 1.62 from is it 1.62 times the rest of the power of minus 16 we use we show it actually from our previous slide here let me show you from this slides yeah this one so we are going to use 1.6 times the rest of the power of minus 2 because we are talking about the charges are two so we are going to use 1.6 times the to the power of we are going to use 1.6 times 10 raised to the power of minus 19 but we put it as a square yeah since we have q1 and q2 so therefore at the end we are going to have something like this we are going to have something like this uh f is equal to 1.6 times raised to the power of minus uh minus 19 since they are two so we put everything as a square and then of course we have our value of uh key so of course our value of key is 9 point uh, 9 point zero nine i think times the rest of power of minus nine so is it minus nine of our nine then you do it you multiply it and of course we have the distance which is 5.3 times 10 raised to the power of uh minus 11. so you put everything as a square then at the end you are going to obtain this then for the gravitational force the mass are here the masses are here and of course the distance of separation are here and then you are going to get your gravitational force and this is how these are obtained I hope you are clear now. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I have a question. Okay, what is your question? The um at the end of the two formulas, what does No, actually, forget about this. It's just like something like vector. So just forget about it because we are not going to look at it. Just remember that from the gravitational force, we have G, M, M, M1, M2 all over R square. And then for Q, we have Q1, Q2 all over R square. Do you understand? So I think without wasting much of our time, I think we are going to stop from here because this is just an introduction of the class. And uh, one thing that I want you to understand with this course, it is very, very important to understand the theoretical